Uh, Bacillus thuringiensis. Say that 10 times fast. Hello, plant pals, and welcome to another video. So today I have some bad news. Uh, I have been having some mystery damage on a few of my leaves and it's been going on for a couple of months and I couldn't figure out what was causing it. I thought at one point that it might have been leftover damage from the spider mites or from you know, the pesticides and sprays that I used to get rid of the spider mites. Um, unfortunately, I now know that is not the case. So this past week, I was cleaning one of my anthuriums, just rinsing off the leaves, making sure that, you know, it's good and healthy. Cause I noticed that there was some damage and I just wanted to kind of take a closer look. Um, when I found this, those little white threads uh, that you see on the leaves there are unfortunately thrips larva. Uh, I have never had thrips before. Unfortunately, this is my first time. And I'm a little bit frustrated because I did purchase this plant with it looking that way. And I didn't realize at the time, uh, but I noticed there was more of those on there than there was when I got it in the mail. Uh, so I did a little bit of research and it turns out those are thrips. So <laughs> uh, not my favorite part of this week. For anyone who is not familiar, there are three, maybe four really, really common houseplant pests. Uh, mealybugs, which I have a few plants that have mealybugs. They're not a big deal in my mind. I actually, uh, I'm gonna tell you one of the things that I do for them. It's really, really easy. I keep a bottle of, like a spray bottle of alcohol mixed with water, uh, about eight to one ratio, I wanna say next to whatever plant has mealybugs and I spray it down every single day. If I see a white spot, I spray it. And honestly, I want to say that's probably the most effective thing that I've done for mealybugs. Um, you know, you can do the thing where you spray it down a couple times a week, but the alcohol kills most plant pests on contact and it is very effective. So mealybugs, they don't really scare me. Uh, next up is spider mites. I also had spider mites for the first time this year. Um, they are little sap sucking jerks. Uh, they leave some very distinctive webbing on your plants. So it's really easy to spot them, you know, especially once the infestation gets worse and they're fairly easily controlled. Um, just with the application of the right products, rinse them off and they don't spread quite as quickly as thrips and thrips unfortunately are winged little bastards. Um, they don't fly so much as glide, but they do have wings. And because of those wings, they can spread pretty effectively throughout an entire collection. And I've narrowed it down actually to two separate plants that I purchased that I believe both had thrips at the time of purchase. Um, the one is particularly bad. That is actually my big, beautiful Gloriosum. Uh, which I'm very disappointed about, but we'll get to that later. But I had both of those plants in my collection. And here's the kicker. You spray down your plants when you get them with something like Captain Jack's, maybe, you know, Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. And that stuff is awesome. Uh, its main ingredient is spinosad, um, which is one of the most effective houseplant pest killers. And you spray it down and you think you're good. No, unfortunately, thrips actually lay their eggs inside of the tissue of your plants. So inside of the leaves, inside of the stems, you can spray it down all you want, but those leaves are still going to be there, which is why it is so, so important that you treat your house plants at least a couple weeks and you do it two to three days apart to make sure that as those eggs hatch, you are killing them that way that you prevent their life cycle from progressing. Um, unfortunately, my incoming plants, I did not do that on. I simply sprayed them down and I thought that was sufficient. 
Um, I did not know what I was looking for, like I do now, unfortunately, when it comes to thrifts. Uh, so I, you know, integrated those plants right into my collection and now we have what you see over here. We have multiple plants lined up <laughs> with little yellow sticky traps, um, not touching, and I'm going to be treating all of those today. Before I get to treating them though, I am going to share with you what my plan is for treating thrips. So uh, again, if you're not familiar with thrips, they are winged little devils, but they go through multiple cycles in their lifetime. So when they're you know, first laid eggs, they're typically laid inside of the cell tissue of your plants. Then they hatch into larvae and they go from larvae and they turn uh, to pupa. And sometimes at that stage, they drop to the soil. So it can be, depending on the type of thrips you have, prudent to change out your soil. Um, then they go through their nymph stage in the soil and then they emerge as fully winged little voracious plant destroying monsters. Um, so knowing this life cycle is actually what's going to enable you to fully uh, eradicate your thrips in the shortest time period. So I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I'm doing. With that in mind, so eggs, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that you can do about the cycle where the eggs are present. Um, you can treat with systemic, which is one of the things that I'm doing. However, uh, as they're not eating the plant at that time and they're in the egg, you're not gonna be able to eradicate them. So you still do have to diligently treat. However, uh, by the point where the larvae stage comes into play, I have two main things that I am going to be using. One is Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. This stuff is awesome. Its main ingredient is spinosad, and it is actually something that remains on your plant for a couple of days. So any bug or pest that eats your plants will be ingesting the spinosad, and it does cause them to die um, from the spinosad consumption. Uh, there are several different types of ingestible things that do uh, kill plant pests. Spinosad, I believe, is a neurotoxin um, to these plant pests. So it is important to be careful. However, plant pests can develop a resistance to spinosad. So that is why it's so important to alternate your treatments with an insecticidal soap. So an insecticidal soap is my next uh, line of defense against some of these pests. Um, it will kill the adults, the nymphs, anything that it comes into contact with because it has the fatty lipids in it that dissolve the outer exoskeleton layer of the plant pests. So no matter what stage they're in, when this uh, soap comes in contact with them, it will kill them. However, I'm actually not going to be continuing to use the Captain Jack's uh, variety. I actually have a little bit left in this bottle before it is done. I do have on order an insecticidal soap that has perithrin in it. Uh, perithrin being one of the um, ingredients that is most well known for killing thrips. It is a pesticide, so it is important to be careful when you do use it. Um, but I you know, want the best chance of eradicating these pests and not seeing them back again. So I'm going to be using up this uh, insecticidal soap and the other one should be in in a couple of days. But this one is good. It has the potassium salts of fatty acids, just like I said. So it will kill off those you know, bugs or larvae or nymph or whatever stage it is when it comes in contact with them. So that is my contact kills. Those are, you know, my larvae to adult stage killers. Additionally, I am using these. So these are mosquito dunks. Um, I've actually been using these for a long time. So um, for those of you who are familiar with mosquito dunks, it has BT or, oh lord, uh, bacteria, uh, Bacillus thuringiensis. Say that 10 times fast. Bacillus thuringiensis in it. Uh, and that BT bacteria actually does kill and uh, on ingestion. So the plant pests eat it and it actually causes them to starve to death, I believe, uh, is what happens and that is an effective killer. So typically BT, uh, you make a tea out of it. 
I use you know one of these mosquito dunks I break it in half and I put it in all the containers that I use for water uh, to water my plants and typically it is a very very effective killer of fungus gnats and mosquitoes as marketed but fungus gnats so I've been using BT for actually a long time to control my fungus gnat population um, at this point I rarely if ever see a fungus gnat so you know it's working pretty well for me um, and I've been using it for months now um, unintentionally I actually found out that BT is something that can treat the nymph stage of thrips and that is only however if the thrips do drop to the soil for their nymph stage um, like I said several different thrips you know several different types will go through different life cycles some of them go through their pupate and nymph stages on the leaves some of them drop to the soil so for the ones that drop to the soil this is something that I am using and you know trying to combat them with uh, next up is for the adults specifically I am using my yellow sticky traps uh, these yellow sticky traps you can buy them on Amazon and I'm going to link everything that I'm using down below that way if you guys would like to use it and you are unfortunately battling thrips hopefully this is going to give you a good starting point but these yellow sticky traps you peel off the little white paper and it is very very sticky uh, so what I've done is I've taken these and I've surrounded the pots of either every plant that I believe to have thrips or every plant that was close to a suspected thrips uh, infestation and just like it does with fungus gnats it actually will catch and hold and kill the adult thrips so i did want to go ahead and insert some footage of what the adults i'm catching on my traps look like uh so i feel like the top left one is a pretty good representation uh if you can see it is pretty pointy i don't know how really else to describe it it does not look like a fungus gnat um it's obviously winged and that's kind of where the similarity ends i mean the thrips are pretty pointy little devils um they almost look like the if a fungus gnat was a mosquito i mean i guess that's kind of how i would describe it but i just kind of wanted to give you guys that visual so you kind of know what i'm looking at here uh, like i said they are very poor flyers so they do tend to glide more than they do fly um so they stay pretty low to my understanding and they do stick onto these. Actually, I have a few of them that are really gross and they've made me cringe um, because of the thrips that are on there. That's actually the first time I saw an adult thrips in my collection is after I put out those traps. Until then, I did not see a single adult. Um, and you know, that's a good thing in some views because typically you don't see the adults until the uh, infestation is really, really bad. However, it also, you know, hit the infestation. I didn't know until I saw the larvae and realized that there were more of them than there were before and that there's damage that wasn't there before. So that is what I'm doing for the adults. And then just in general, I am using a systemic. So systemic can be great. I know it is not available everywhere. It is not available in Canada, for example, but in the US, uh, systemic does have imiclopred imiclopred that's what it is um at least this one does and it is really really effective at treating mealybugs and thrips the reason that i stopped using systemic and may have contributed to this problem is because this specific type of systemic is like a stimulant for lack of a better word to spider mites so spider mites will go crazy on your plants if you have a systemic in their system. So that is something to keep in mind. I am weighing the risks and the benefits of using the uh, systemic at this point. And actually my plan is to use this on all of the plants that are suspect and close to the suspects at this point. And I actually have another uh, different systemic coming in the mail. It is the SNS 209, I believe is what it's called. Becca De La Plants here on YouTube actually uses it in her collection and her collection is where I first saw this. So what it is, it's a rosemaric acid uh, extract and rosemary essential oil extract. And those two things together are, you know, watered into your plants the way that you would normally water. 
and it uptakes into the root system and into your plants and it basically makes your plants taste bad to plant pests. It can kill them, but it doesn't always. Um, so my plan is to start with the systemic and then follow it up with the SNS 209 as it, that comes in to hopefully prevent any backlash from spider mites because I would be absolutely devastated to get rid of the thrips and have these spider mites come back. So that is my current plan um, along with removing any damaged leaves um, because again the thrips lay eggs in the plant tissue. So if you have any leaves that are particularly damaged, it is worth it to go ahead and remove those leaves because you are removing those eggs, hopefully. <laughs> um, so my plan is to also prune back a lot of the damaged leaves. Thankfully, I don't have too many. There are a few like my Gloriosum that have significant amounts of damage on the leaves and I will show those to you. That way you have an idea of the signs to look out for. Um, but for now, Let's go ahead and move to the bathroom because that is where I'm going to be treating all of these plants. All right, so here we are in my bathroom. This is actually my spare bathroom um, and I commandeer it for plants things all the time. Uh, my poor boyfriend <laughs> is very understanding and only moans and groans a little bit uh, about all of the dirt that gets all over this room. I actually do need to clean it right now, but considering it's about to be in use for this, it's just gonna be like this for a little bit. So before I get started spraying down some of these, I wanted to go ahead and show you uh, some of the damage that I've noticed as a result of the thrips. That way, if you see similar damage on your plants, you can take note and maybe be a little bit cautious about what could be coming. All right, so I'm gonna start with this plant. This is my Anthurium, um, one of my favorite plants, actually. I'm really disappointed about that. And this, I think, is one of the mother plants of all of the thrips. Um, and I am being really, really careful as I'm you know, going through all these plants, washing my hands uh, very, very carefully. I do actually have that same alcohol spray bottle that I've been spraying myself with. <laughs> um, just be extra careful. I do not want to spread this to anywhere else in my collection. Uh, in fact, I've moved a few of my plants from my collection inside outside into the greenhouse because I don't want them to be in the presence of thrips. So, and I actually do have uh, ladybugs coming for the greenhouse. So any thrips that are in there should be made very short work of by ladybugs. So this I think is one of the hardest hit leaves. Um, this in particular, uh, Anthurium I think held up really, really well. I think it was in the beginning stages of infestation when I purchased it. It's not the worst plant though, that one's to come. But this damage on the edge here, that haloing uh, is actually very indicative of a thrips infestation or thrips eggs actually to be more specific. Um, the best photo I have of the thrips larvae is actually from these leaves a couple of months ago, um, which I'm very frustrated by, not particularly happy, but it is what it is. I know now, um, and I'm actually just giving these a really, really close once over. So you can also see, if you look, just some of like these weird little spots, not like this. This is actually previous damage uh, in these leaves. It came up like that. So not concerned about that damage. I am concerned about the new and worsening damage like this, the scarring kind of look. Um, and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about as we go along, but just the spots that weren't there, that these actually started like almost silvery, that's a bad sign. So that's that one. Um, the next one, I think I'm gonna stick with this one. This is my Philodendron Fuzzy Petiole. So this one was right next to my Gloriosum, um, which is what I think happened uh, here. 
and I first started noticing actually that the leaves were not coming out of the sheets. So I actually had a whole leaf right here die off um, before even making it out of the sheath. And usually I spray the leaves pretty regularly, like every night at the very least, with water to try to give them some lubrication, help them out of their sheaths. Um, that was not enough and the leaves actually turned really crispy, uh, which was really unusual. I've not had any other issues with this plant putting out leaves. Um, I mean, obviously they do like the philodendron or Cinderella thing, but that was just very unusual. And then I started seeing things like this. I hope you guys can see that. Like that light kind of scarring on the leaves. Um, there's that. This one, same kind of deal, has like light scarring on the leaves. I do have my ring light on, so I'm hoping that you guys can actually see. Oh, this one. That's light scarring up top, up here. That is a bad sign. Um, that is a sign of thrips. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what to say about that one. I'm still kind of upset to be quite honest with you because this is my collection. You know, I, I work uh, to make the money to buy my plants to help relieve my stress and it's part of my hobbies. It's one of the things that I enjoy doing. So for someone to sell plants um, that come from either infested greenhouses or they know are infested, uh, to me is just really incorrigible, honestly. Uh, it is not something that should be done and it's actually quite hurtful. Um, anyways, but yeah, uh, if you are a seller, please, 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 um, just know that selling people plants that you know have pests is not right, it's not okay, and as someone who collects plants, this could easily have taken down my entire collection, um, and it could be heartbreaking. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about that, but just know that when you do get new plants in, and they were too good to be true, be very careful, because I think that's what happened to me, unfortunately. Um, so that was my fuzzy petiole. And next up is, I think, the worst one. I'm trying to figure out how I can show it to you, because this thing's gonna be heavy. Oh, let's see. Oh. And all these plants are getting sprayed down, so I'm not super worried about them touching, but I'm also not thrilled about it. Uh, so this is my Gloriosum. Uh, I got it from someone who said that they were going to be traveling and were sizing down their collection and did not want to burden their friends with watching over their plants while they were gone. So I got a really, really great deal on this plant. Um, you know, this leaf is a little bit messed up, but this leaf is still actually quite pretty. However, these leaves are the ones that I'm uh, a little bit worried about and probably will end up removing, honestly, at the end of this. Um, this one in particular, I hope you guys can see that. There we go that kind of silvery damage on the leaves. Uh, that is really, really thrippy looking damage. Um, that is what happens when they kind of eat at that layer of the plants. Um, Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm checking for visible pests as I'm doing this, but they eat at that layer of your plants and they leave behind that weird silvery looking damage. Um, and that's kind of what I was seeing and I didn't know why. Uh, I was 
unfamiliar. I actually thought that I was caring for this plant badly, which to be fair, I still could be. <laughs> but this damage is not normal. Um, that is something that is unusual. And yeah, unfortunately, that looks really, really thrippy. That's the worst, I think, thrip affected leaf. But yeah, you know, this one's obviously also not doing really well. You can kind of see the damage on that one as well. So this one is one of the first ones that I did go ahead and treat um, and treat most intensively. Uh, I surrounded this entire pot with the sticky traps. And I'm actually going to show you if I can find a good kind of view of one, what a thrip looks like. Ooh, that one is still alive. That's gross. Um, Ah, there we go. That's a good one. So up here, I'm gonna be careful to touch my face, but up here on kind of the top left over here, and I'll see if I can insert some better pictures. I know this kind of isn't very easily visible. Um, thrips are kind of pointy, uh, whereas fungus snats are not. Um, so if you've ever had fungus gnats on these, like they pretty much can wallpaper these things in no time when you have a bad fungus gnat infestation. Um, thrips fly a little bit differently. And I did actually manage to see one when I moved this one into here um, flying. But they fly a little bit differently and they're just very pointy looking. It's very weird um, when you compare it to like a normal fungus gnat. So there are a few thrips yeah on these so this actually i'm really happy that i used the sticky traps because i am hoping to catch and kill as many adults as possible before they have the ability to lay eggs um and adult thrips can lay anywhere from two to ten eggs a day and about i believe a hundred eggs might be more in their lifetime um it really depends on the type of thrips though there are like six to seven thousand types of thrips, not all of which are plant pests, but the ones that are can be uh, pretty damaging pretty quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and get on with spraying all of these down. Today I'm going to be using the Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew, the uh, Spinosad one, and that, like I said, that one you want to alternate off with the uh, insecticidal soap, but if you spray the insecticidal soap, or soap too often, it can actually damage your plants and your leaves. So you don't want to spray it more than like two times a week max. So I sprayed a couple days ago with insecticidal soap. Today I'm going to be spraying with the spinosad. Next time I'll do insecticidal soap and so on until I've been treating for at least two weeks um, and don't see any more thrips collecting in my traps. So let's go ahead and get into the spraying.
just about it. Uh, my plant room is almost entirely empty right now. Uh, the plants that you see remaining actually are either ones that I didn't feel like were, you know, close enough to have an issue um, or, you know, I've already treated. Uh, I do spray the remaining plants down at least once a day with the alcohol spray. Um, and I did go ahead and mix systemic into their soil. So I don't think <laughs> that there should be an issue, but everyone else I have systematically sprayed down with the pesticide of the day, um, sprayed any uh, additional ones off with water really thoroughly and mixed in the systemic into their soils. And I am hopeful that in no time, this will get my plant room back to its beautiful and peaceful, normal uh, environment. But for now, this is what we're left with. So go ahead and like this video. Uh, there is a thumbs up down below. I hope you never need to use it uh, as far as all these products for thrips, but if you do, you know, this is my plan and I hope it works for you. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Normally my content is not quite so stressful, but this is where we are today. And if you have any thoughts on fighting thrips, please leave them down below. I would love to hear your experience and what worked for you. So until next time, that's it guys. Thanks. Bye.